Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Hello, can you hear me well, Lee? Yes, I can hear you, In Over to you. Oh, okay. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you very much for uh, arranging your time to join the Oak Grove uh, Open Day webinar this afternoon. My name is Ying. I'm the training coordinator for the academic training program at Oak Grove. Um, uh, so, uh, Oak Grove Open Days is an annual event where we want to introduce you to what we are doing at Oak Grove and own training opportunity that can be of your interest. Our unit has a, a history of uh, more than 30 years working in Vietnam on biomedical research in collaboration with the Hospital for Tropical DC in Ho Chi Minh City and um, with the national one in Hanoi as well. So uh, we aim to uh, bring positive impact to the global health, uh, especially to the uh, prevention, diagnosis, and treatment for uh, infectious diseases in Vietnam and in the region. And in parallel with uh, research projects, we uh, provide training opportunity to uh, young Vietnamese researchers um, through a PD scholarship program. So that's why this afternoon we, we focus to introduce you about uh, our research activity and the uh, PD program. Um, next slide, Lee. So uh, for the open day agenda this afternoon, uh, firstly, um, we would like you to have a, a virtual tour around our units. Then you will have a chance to meet Dr. Lee Lee Jones, uh, who is the regional academic training leader for Oku and Moku in Thailand. And um, after her talk, you will meet scientists and a BD student uh, who represent their research group to introduce uh, the oral research activity and uh, study in projects. Um, at around 3.30, we, we have a 10 minutes for question and answer and a short uh, survey. Uh, following that, uh, we will show you a short video introducing our group research culture and training. And to close the event, two junior students, the BD student, Ms. Tu and Mr. Nhat, who will tell you uh, the story of the way to work their BD journey. And at the end, uh, we may have time for question and answer, but we will try to close um, at 4 p.m. So for an online event like this, uh, please uh, help mute your uh, audio during the course and you can uh, use the chat box for your questions. In case your question floated or unanswered, you can email us later via the training email that we will provide you later. Um, and I hope you will enjoy uh, this afternoon webinar. So now is the time for your tour. Uh, over to you, Liz. Hi everyone, lovely to meet you all virtually um, and thank you to Ian for that introduction. My name is Dr Lee Jones, I am the Regional Academic Training Leader at Okru and also at Moru which is our sister unit in Thailand. But before I get started talking about um, the PhD training programme, I'm just going to mute one of you keeps unmuting your microphone, sorry. Please remember to mute your microphone, okay? Um, all right, so before we get started, I'm going to take you on a short virtual tour of Oku with our director, Professor Guy Thwaites. Hey, Chi. Hey, Guy. Good to see you. Where are we right now? So we're at the Hospital for Tropical Diseases. So what's so special about this place? The Hospital for Tropical Diseases is a 550-bed hospital just for infectious diseases. It's probably one of the largest infectious disease hospitals in the world. And? And it's where Okru is. So come with me. Wow, that's a huge building. What's in here? So this is Okru. This is Okru's home. There are about 300 people working in, in here. We're part of the Hospital for Tropical Diseases. Let's go. Uh, 
Hey, Yui. Hi. What are you up to? Uh, I'm doing some DNA extraction for Klebsia pneumonia uh, for whole genome sequencing. That's what is resistant to um, cap webinars and colistin. That's what we collected from the Harvard for Topical Diseases. So this is the enemy really, isn't it? And I think it's, re it's really useful to have a look at the enemy in the eye every morning, don't you think? Yeah, this is true anyway. This is my motivation for my research and that's why I have spent so many years to try to understand them. Are there any machines to help improve the efficiency of your work? Well, there are, yes, and that's whole genome sequencing. So I think we should go and have a look at that, uh, that facility now. Should we go, Yui? Yeah, sure. Let's go. So, Yui, this is one of our MySeq Illumina sequences. What are, what are you doing with it here? So I'm uh, working on a whole genome sequencing of Clefsin pneumonia. So not only is we are we doing the sequencing for drug-resistant bacteria, but also for emerging viruses, uh, viruses as well. Yeah, so those two things are really important for Oak Ridge research. So emerging infectious diseases, drug-resistant infections, and the ability to sequence is really, really important to be able to understand how the, the bugs cause disease, but also how they spread around the communities. I've heard that there are some really special labs here at Oku. There are. There's the Biosafety Level 3 laboratory and the SAPO 4 laboratory. Some of the only labs like this in Vietnam, so we ought to go and have a look at them. Wow, this looks like a highly secure place. So what really goes on in here? So this is for very dangerous pathogens and for dangerous animal viruses. And there really aren't any laboratories like this in the rest of the country. Hmm. Can we go in? No, you can't go in there, I'm afraid. You've got to have special training to be able to get in there, which is something that Okru invests a lot of time in doing. Since we are in the hospital, do these research go to the field? There's a really strong link between these laboratories and the hospital. The labs are here because of the patients. So at this point, I think we need to go and speak to Dr. Ian and see the hospital. Hi, Dr. Ian. Hi. Tell us a little bit more about you. Yeah, I am Lâm Minh Yên. I have been working with Emerging Infection Group of Ukru from 2016. So where are we now? Oh, now I am in front of ICU Department of Hospital for Tropical Disease. Can we go in and take a look? Uh, not before you get the proper protection. Uh, Dr. Quang Minh will show you inside in the ICU. Are there any new features being added to the ICU recently? So Ugru provide a wearable machine where so we can monitor the patient and uh, many modern ICU beds. In the COVID-19 pandemic, many Ugru professors still give us some idea about the treatment for the patients. They still organize many case report presentations with us. They still have us with doing some research from the data in the computer. So Opro is still a very important collaborator with us. Is this the same impact across the country and region? Uh, yes, oh, so you can talk with the, my colleague in National Hospital for Tropical Disease. Thomas, you look all wrapped up. Yes, it's winter here in the north. Does that increase the incidence of infectious disease? It does. The cold and humid weather favors the respiratory tract infections. So there are more community-acquired pneumonia in the hospital these days. And also people take more antibiotics. So it's the high season for antimicrobial resistance. So tell us more about Oku Hanoi. We are located in the National Hospital of Tropical Diseases on the premises of Batmai Hospital together with other specialized hospitals. Where else does Oku Hanoi have footprints in? We have three sites. Two are in the NHTD, one in the city center here, one more in the north. This one in the north actually serves currently as a COVID-19 treatment center, and it also holds the ultra built National Reference Lab for Antimicrobial Resistance. The third site is NIHE, the National Institute of Hygiene and Epidemiology. All right. Hanoi is the capital of Vietnam. That's where all the decisions are made and where all the politicians are. 
And we felt it was important for our research to have a presence here in, uh, in Hanoi, to be able to work with national hospitals, uh, with national public health institutes, and to have a proximity to the Ministry of Health and to policymakers there. Wow, that's really impressive. Thank you. Actually, the unique thing about uh, Okra Hanoi is that we have clinical research at the hospital, we have lab-based research, we have the epidemiology and we have the public health arm. So what do you guys focus on here? Our research activities range from improving surveillance, improving diagnostic to designing control intervention for hospitals, but also for the community. We also have some whole genome sequencing of multi drug resistant bacteria like, for example, you have here some results of a cluster of resistance Nessera gonorrhea that has been identified in Vietnam. Oh, are the research conducted only in the cities? Not all of them. We also work in the rural areas in collaboration with the provincial CDCs, for example, in Nam Dinh and Hanam province. Is the situation different in the south of Vietnam than in the north? There are some uh, cultural and behavioral differences indeed, but it's certainly not as diverse as what you can see in Indonesia, for example. Okay, so that gives you a flavor um, of what we're doing in Vietnam. Let me just go back to my presentation and hopefully you can all see that. So that's given you a flavor of our offices in Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi. Okru as a whole, we have a really strong vision and that is to have local, regional and global impact on health by leading a locally driven research program on infectious diseases in Southeast Asia. And as you could see from the video, our main base is in Vietnam. So we have two sites, one in the south, which is where Okru is at the Hospital for Tropical Diseases in District 5 in Ho Chi Minh City. And that is a referral hospital for all infectious diseases in the south of the country. We have a large clinical laboratory building, which is exclusively funded by the Vietnamese government. And in that building, we have a number of laboratories belonging both to the hospital and to Okru, where we do our research. At the moment in Ho Chi Minh City, we have 299 staff, so we're a very big unit. And as well as working with the Hospital for Tropical Diseases, we also collaborate with a number of other hospitals and universities in the south of Vietnam. In the north, we're based at NHTD, which is a large disease hospital that treats over 4,000 patients every year. And that hospital is under the direct supervision of the Ministry of Health. In Okru, Hanoi, we have 49 staff members and the researchers there, as you heard from Thomas, collaborate with a number of other hospitals and institutes across the, across the north of the country, in particular with NIHE, the National Institute, for hygiene and epidemiology. We also have other sites outside of Vietnam. So we also have a sister unit in Jakarta in Indonesia called EOCRU, which is the Eichmann Oxford Clinical Research Unit. It is hosted and integrated in the Eichmann Institute of Molecular Biology and partnered closely with the University of Indonesia. And this unit, focuses on bench to bedside research to improve health in Indonesia. In Nepal, we also have another unit, Okra Nepal, based in Kathmandu. And on that site, we are hosted by Patan Hospital and the Academy of Health Sciences. The major focus in Nepal is on enteric fever and also other healthcare priorities for the country of Nepal. Our research at Okru covers a really wild, wide and diverse range of pathogens. So as you all know, we've been doing a lot of work on COVID-19 recently, but it doesn't stop there. And we work on everything from influenza, emerging infections, malaria, dengue, typhoid, HIV, CNS infections, hepatitis, TB, and we also have a real interest in antimicrobial resistance, which is a huge problem um, in Asia, particularly in Vietnam. 
When we work on these diseases, we use a number of diverse disciplines. So we have scientists working across a range of areas from clinical trials, which we carry out a high number of in collaboration with our hospital partners. We focus on immunology, genetics, microbiology, epidemiology, and also bench-based research in biostatistics, mathematical modeling, and health economics. We also have a growing interest and a growing team covering areas of social science, as well as public engagement. And you also had a sneak peek into HTD, where we have a team working on medical innovations, particularly in the ICU. So our research is really exciting. It takes place both in the hospitals and in the lab, but also in the office, as well as in the community and in the field. We are here today really to introduce to you our PhD programme, OCRE, which we're very proud of. And every year we offer opportunities for talented Vietnamese and Indonesian students and clinicians to enrol in a fully funded four year training programme. Successful applicants to this programme will be registered with universities in the UK, but they shall remain in their host countries to carry out research work of relevance to Vietnam and Indonesia. Our research, as you know, focuses on infectious diseases and these diseases are relevant to the whole region. The fellowship itself includes funding to cover supervision and training opportunities, which may also include support for periods of overseas training, as well as attending overseas conferences. The tuition fees at the UK University are covered, as well as providing a salary for um, successful applicants to support them throughout the four year programme. And you can see some nice pictures here of some of our students at Oxford University as well as presenting their work at the, univers the Open University in the UK. From 2000 until now, we've graduated over 100 PhD students. And at the moment, we have around 33 PhD students in process. We like to celebrate our PhD student successes. You can see here a picture of one of our most recent PhD graduates, Dr. Kartika Saraswati from Bali in Indonesia. And this is a nice picture of her um, at her university, as well as the nice smiling pictures of her assessors after her successful viva things. On the right here, you can see a picture of one of our PhD parties where we welcome our new students as well as congratulate the students who have recently graduated. During the period of completing a PhD, which obviously involves a lot of time working directly on a research project, OCRU also supports the development of their students. And we do this in a number of ways. So we offer practical skills training programs. So that could be anything from biostatistics to qualitative research, to phylogenetic training, for example. What is also very, very important is to ensure that the scientists coming through our training program are supported in development of transferable skills. So for example, we support our students to become proficient in scientific writing, to manage their time effectively, and also to present their work to the public. We also have careers events. So we have a careers in science event every year in order to expand the minds of our students and let them understand and get a flavor of the different pathways available to them in research and in science more broadly. And one of the really important things that we like to support our students in is to train them and involve them in public engagement activities. So you can see here a nice picture on the right hand side where we visited um, specialist STEM students. So students who are very excited about science. And this was us um, at a school where we took some of our PhD students along to meet with the students to answer their questions and to present their science. Every year we also have a student conference and the Oak Ridge Student Conference is in collaboration with our sister unit in Thailand, which is called Moru. And it allows our students to get together and network with their peers, 
We also have a fun event called the Three Minute Thesis Competition, where students compete to present their thesis in just three minutes to a non-specialist audience. And after this competition, the, the winner will receive a travel grant to go to conferences of their choice. This is probably our highlight of the year now in our Oak Crew training programme. So that's about the training programme, but how do you apply? I'm sure there's many people on the call who are interested in doing a PhD, at least I hope there are. And what you need to know most importantly is to be eligible for our PhD programme, you must have a high level degree in a related subject. So this would be ideally a master's or an MD if you're a medical doctor. And you need to have an English score of seven and an ILTS score. So that would be seven or above. How do you apply? Well, we will be advertising predetermined projects on the University of Oxford website, and that's under the Nuffield Department of Medicine. That takes place in September. The application deadline would be around December, and we would interview shortlisted applicants in February 2023. The earliest start date for the project would be April. We can also defer to October, depending on uh, the needs of the project and the student who applies. All of the projects and students are registered with a UK university. I've already mentioned that this is four years fully paid. We can also discuss part-time options where, um, where necessary and where relevant. If you do have more details on the timeframe for this, then you can contact us directly at training at .org. However, what if you already have an amazing idea for a project and you would like to speak to someone at Oak Crew about doing that project as a PhD? Well, you can have a look at our Oak Crew website at www.oakcrew.org. You can perhaps identify a potential Oak Crew supervisor. Some of the presentations that you will hear today will enable you to understand more about each of our research groups. So maybe that will also help you identify a group you're interested in working with. You can either contact them directly through our website or you can email us, um, email the training team again at the general email you can see on your screen here. If you do have an idea for a project, we would request that you prepare a short project proposal Remembering, of course, that all of our research is focused on improving human health and infectious diseases in Southeast Asia. Remember to have clear aims and objectives, consider the outcomes of this research, and be really clear on what gap in knowledge you're trying to fill. You must also provide an up-to-date CV to outline your qualifications and job history, your research experience and transferable skills, and of course, don't forget a cover letter. Now do remember that if you do have an idea for a project, this will still need to go through the same competitive recruitment process if you wish to be considered for a fully funded Oak Crew studentship. So those are two ways to apply. You can either check out our projects online on the Oxford webpage in September, or if you have an idea, maybe you want to write something yourself and suggest that to us. So we have graduated over 100 students and they are doing many wonderful things from postdocs, both at Oak Crew and beyond. Some of our graduates have gone into industry, some are working in high clinical positions, government positions, maybe even running their own research groups. So our PhD students are doing lots of exciting things and we hope that you can join us and see your career develop in the same way. I would like to stop now and thank you for your time. This is a nice picture of us from our student conference back in 2019 um, before COVID put paid to face-to-face -face events, but we'll be looking forward to getting back to them very soon. Now, the time is just after 25 minutes past two. Um, I would like to continue with our presentations, but do be aware that you will have time to ask any questions you have at the end of the presentations. You can put these in the chat box. Uh, we have Miss Ian, who's manning the chat box today. 
If there are lots and lots of questions, she may miss you, so apologies in advance. If you do not get your question answered, do send us an email later at training at okra.org and we will get back to you. But I'd now like to move on and introduce and give you a flavour to the many research groups that we have at Oak Crew. So without further ado, I'm going to pass over to our first group from Oak Crew Hanoi. Sonia, are you on the line? Hi everyone. Hi Sonia, over um, to you. Yeah, really, really great to see so many people online today. This is the Okru Hanoi team celebrating after winning the uh, tug of war competition against the National Hospital for Tropical Diseases. That was a few years ago um, and we've got the rematch this week. So let's see if we can keep our title. Next, please. So we have three main areas of research in Hanoi that are um, influenza and emerging infections, serosurveillance and antibiotic resistance. Next, please. Um, the Hanoi unit started in 2007 with a focus on influenza and emerging infections. Um, it started with a cohort in Hanam looking at influenza. Next, please. So this cohort was in Tangha Commune in Hanan province and enrolled 270 households that have been followed up since 2007, looking at uh, the natural history of influenza transmission, as well as um, some vaccine um, effect studies, and more recently looking at COVID transmission. Next, please. Uh, the second area of work is serosurveillance. Um, OCRA has been involved in establishing a national serosurveillance network, which includes 20 provincial and national hospitals. And this means collecting blood samples left over from these hospitals and storing them in a, a serum bank. And we can use these samples to test later for emerging infections like COVID-19 or um, pre-existing conditions that we want to track um, like measles and tetanus. Next, please. And the third area is antibiotic resistance. And this is a very large area for our uh, unit in Hanoi now. Um, and within that, we have three kind of sub areas. We have surveillance, antimicrobial stewardship and population and one health interventions. Next, please. So um, we've also been involved in establishing a, a national AMR surveillance network, which includes a network of of provincial hospitals and setting up a reference lab at the National Hospital for Tropical Diseases. Next. Um, and we've expanded this surveillance work now to other countries in the region um, in a project called ACORN, which is a clinically oriented re resistance surveillance, which means that it collects not only resistance data for tracking surveillance of resistance, but additional clinical data, which makes the data useful in real time for doctors to make decisions. Next. Um, our antimicrobial stewardship work is mainly done in three provinces in Viet Tiep, Dong Tap and Nam Ding. Um, and we're looking at the evaluation of the implementation and the economic and cost effectiveness of antimicrobial stewardship programs. Um, and so these graphs kind of show what we're hoping to see, reduction in overall antibiotic use. Next, please. Um, and then moving on to the population and One Health interventions. Next, please. Um, this includes a recently completed trial looking at point of care diagnostics in commune health centres. That was done in 48 commune health centres in Namling. Next, please. Um, a range of social science and engagement projects, including working with school kids, we developed a video game, uh, photography exhibitions and more. Next. And an ongoing whole system intervention in, in Namding in 64 communes and four hospitals, which includes farmers, communities and healthcare workers in trying to tackle the challenge of antimicrobial resistance in, in this um, study area. Next, please. We have five current PhD students in Hanoi. Um, 
all working on antibiotic resistance. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Nam now, who's going to talk about his project and his PhD journey. So next slide, please, Tian. Please next, yes, I think. Or just like in my, my presentation, like after this. So can you next or the next? Okay, um, so good afternoon, everyone. You just met uh, my PhD supervisor and uh, it's a great honor for me to talk about my PhD project with all of you. So first of all, very short about myself. I, uh, my name is Nam and uh, before enrolling to the PhD program at Okru, I was an university teacher at Hanoi University of Pharmacy and I got some time exposed with the international education during my master degree in France. Um, so next please. And the, the title of my PhD project is Antibiotic Access and Use in the Community and the Feasibility of Pharmacy Targeted Interventions. If you break down my uh, PhD title, you can see uh, that is two parts. The first one is antibiotic use in the community. And in the community, uh, the patients can take antibiotics from the, the clinics or common health centers or the pharmacies. And I would perform um, the pharmacoepidemiological studies in those sites. I use both the big data from the, uh, the reimbursement data schemed within the, the health insurance uh, program in Vietnam. And uh, I capture a very large data of 200,000 uh, patients with uh, infections uh, diseases. And the second point, like I also used the data uh, from the, the surveys. So I mean that like the data collections was diverse and I learned a lot from that. A very interesting part of my PhD is also about health economics and qualitative studies. So in the second part of my PhD project is about evaluating um, the development of um, the pharmacy targeted intervention and is the, the point of care testing to screen the antibiotic needs. But I think that is a new thing. So it's very important to understand that if people accept this or not. And the second one, how much they want to pay for that. And that's the reason why two of the components of my PhD project is health economics and qualitative research. So you can see that in one single project with one single question, you can diverse yourself with a lot of skill set from pharmacoepidemiology, health economics, and qualitative research. You will learn a lot and grow up after your PhD if you follow our track. Thank you. And, and next, please. There is a lot of things to talk about the interesting and uh, how much I feel blessed about being a PhD student at Oku Hanoi in particular and Oku Vietnam in general. But I think that like there are two very important reasons that may attract you. The first of all is that you can combine your local knowledge with international standards. And even in Vietnam, you will be supervised by very highly internationally qualified experts. And you can get publications in high impact journals, which is a dream in junior researchers in Vietnam. But on the other hand, it's not just about work. You can like travel around the world and meeting so many people from junior to seniors. And you can see like from the pictures, I participated in many classes, I joined many groups, meet people in Thailand, America. And then I even like went to Lisbon and Santorini this summer to enjoy um, a very good atmosphere and attend one of the biggest conference for infectious disease over the world. And in this uh, fall, I will uh, travel to Princeton University, one of the world well-known university in the world uh, to have like three months there. So I think that it is very important that uh, you will learn like a many solid knowledge within your PhD, but you also like develop your skill sets uh, with the soft skill and other things like outside of that. And at one place, you expose yourself with academics, but also uh, non-governmental non organizations and uh, other things like that. And I hope that you enjoy it because it's an opportunity for you. So if you want, and if you agree with me, please join us in the Akuru Hanoi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nam. Okay, passing over to our Emerging Infections group. Do we have Dr. Hoom on the line? Hi. Hi, it's over to you. Okay. 
Um, hi everyone. My name is, is Nhe Hung, and I currently I'm currently a um, third year uh, PhD student of uh, Emerging Infections Group uh, at uh, Okro Ho Chi Minh City. So um, welcome you to the open day today. And uh, on behalf of my group, I will present um, a little information about our work uh, currently. Uh, so as you know that our group uh, name is Emerging Infection. So, um, so our main vision is to develop and sustain a multidisciplinary research group to improve the diagnosis and management of patients with uh, severe infections, as well as to leverage the uh, is existing capacity to address the uh, unprecedented uh, emerging infections challenges. Um, next, please. So um, we all know that uh, we have just spent a year with uh, COVID-19 pandemic on all over the world. And so COVID-19 is the, like uh, the most um, emerging um, infections agents. Uh, so, so it's not an exception for us to uh, have um, many study about it. So uh, first of all, we, 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 we develop uh, the uh, sequencing uh, technique to, uh, for diagnosing uh, the COVID-19 um, agents. As, as well as we also conducted um, um, a large uh, study about uh, COVID-19. So in, in that study, we call it uh, ISARIC uh, study. We have uh, the whole genome, genome sequencing uh, and we describe uh, the COVID-19 um, clinical character characterization. Uh, we uh, describe, also describe some um, immunological aspect of the disease, like uh, virology, uh, immunal responses, or um, uh, also we um, final target of uh, our group is to uh, have the uh, tools for rabbit uh, diagnosis, as well as we um, want to develop the wearable de devices uh, for um, uh, rabbit uh, COVID-19 diagnosis at the clinical setting. So our output uh, last year uh, was over 10 papers um, for only the COVID-19 um, disease. And, and so um, it's not all about the COVID-19, but we also developed some uh, study about non-COVID-19 diseases. So next, please. So um, we 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 have we all have um, like we we want to like um, unravel the 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 new uh, etiologies of infection uh, in uh, Vietnam only not not just in Vietnam only but also um, like um, um, in Southeast Asia and we have a lot of uh, studies uh, like uh, in. Uh, cooperation with um, Thailand or um, some Cambodia or uh, some uh, some um, uh, some nations uh, that uh, have the um, CNS infection as well as the sepsis. So uh, we use the um, the new tools for uh, diagnosis like the novel diseases like um, uh, we use uh, MNGS for uh, CNS infection in adults and children. So currently we have um, uh, two main studies uh, to study about the CNS infection uh, in adults and children. Um, we use uh, clinical metagenomics to uh, discover the new etiologies of uh, CNS infection. Um, also, we have uh, new tools to, um, to have like more exact uh, diagnosis of uh, CNS infection and uh, like lipokalin is one of the example. Uh, we use uh, we use we use at um, biomarker for bacterial meningitis. So um, in cooperation with um, local hospital of uh, like like um, tropical uh, tropical diseases hospital and children's hospital one, number one. Yeah, and um, uh, also we um, we have granted um, by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundations for our study as well as the Welcome Church um, uh, and Okro. Yeah, next please. Um, so um, 
um, beside the non-COVID-19 uh, diseases uh, that um, that specific by the um, infection uh, diseases, we also have the like uh, some study about the innovation in um, in uh, ICU. So uh, we have um, we have uh, conducted a lot of um, studies about um, like. Um, uh, new technique or new devices uh, to support the uh, patients in the ICU, uh, as we have know that we have um, um, established uh, an ICU registry across uh, five ICUs in Vietnam, uh, like uh, in HGD or in uh, Dong Thap or in Trung, Trung Vương and UMC Hospital. So, um, for example, we build a a, a spine uh, ego meter like like a bike for use in SSI uh, rehabilitation in ICU. And um, also we uh, collaborate with the University of Melbourne uh, and Eastern University in Vietnam. Um, on top of that, we also have the electrocardiogram or uh, photo uh, leptismogram signal analysis uh, to uh, predict the severe diseases in tetanus and sepsis. So, um, uh, this study um, like uh, is conducting at the uh, ICU of uh, HDD. Yeah, and um, yeah, so that's all of my uh, my uh, group work uh, currently. And um, and I hope that uh, we have um, given you guys some uh, like um, interesting information about our group. And uh, I hope that you have uh, you have um, uh, a, have a look and uh, have um, a chance to uh, know about our group and uh, uh, good luck with your uh, PhD journey in the future. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Hum. Thank you so much. Um, moving on to the tuberculosis group, um, can I ask Dr. Timothy Walker to unmute and present on behalf of the group? Thanks, Lee. Hello, everyone. Um, nice to see so many people here. Um, I'm going to just uh, introduce the group and then hi, one of our PhD students will talk a little bit about his project in uh, specifically. But just by way of background, we're one of the biggest groups. So we have currently 48 members working across uh, our crew and uh, a number of different hospitals in which we operate. TB, as many of you will know, is a huge problem in the world. It's the biggest infectious disease killer in the world, aside from SARS-CoV-2. SARS-CoV-2 won't linger and TB unfortunately will linger. We have an incidence in this country of well over 140,000 cases per 100,000 population. It accounts for over 20,000 deaths. And drug resistance, although officially is somewhere around 4%, is probably much higher than that too. And things have only got worse since the pandemic struck, as can be seen by the case detection rate in the graph on the on the left. Now, what do we do within a TB group? Well, we cover most aspects of TB research, maybe best known are our clinical trials. Uh, uh, we've, uh, we, we are currently running and have historically run uh, randomized clinical trials in TB meningitis, but we're now also moving into a pulmonary TB, which is new and interesting, uh, new for us and interesting. Um, but we also run projects uh, on diagnostics, uh, whether that's through pathogen detection or uh, by looking at host response. Uh, we uh, run projects looking into drug resistance, uh, how it arises, how one diagnoses it. We look at host response. Uh, we look at pathogenesis, so both what the host does to the bug and what the bug does to the host. Um, and we also uh, use new tools uh, such as artificial intelligence to try and predict outcomes. So, so we cover the full range from, from laboratory studies to epidemiological studies, observational studies, to clinical trials and uh, implement, implementation of new technologies. Uh, so I'll hand over to Hai, who will talk about his specific project, just as an example of one of many. Hello everyone, my name is Hai. I'm a second year student in the tuberculosis group. And as Dr. Timothy already said that, uh, one of our big objective is to study the pathogenesis of TB and improve the outcome of TB treatment. So uh, one of 
a big objective in our group is to use the OMIS study or OMIS technology in order to understanding about the TP susceptibilities and pathophysiologies. Uh, yeah, actually in our group at the currently, currently we perform some techniques related to omic like transcriptomic or uh, genomic in which we measure the expression of multiple genes in of the human. Uh, at the same time, we also do uh, proteomic or metabolomic in which we measure the expression level of metabolite or some of important protein. And then we incorporate, incorporate the data with the clinical data in order to understand about the pathogenesis as well as understand about the mechanism of some drug, some kind of treatment like adjunctive dexamethasone uh, or in order to improve the treatment outcome of the patient. And my PhD project is a part of uh, this. So could you move to next slide, please? Uh, before talking about my PhD project, I would like to give a brief information about uh, a clinical trial in which I collect the sample for my PhD project. And the trial name 27TB uh, with the specific name Nucotrian A4 Hydrolyzed Stratified Trial of Adjunctive Corticoids for HIV Uninfected TBM. Uh, in this trial, we aim to investigate whether the human genotype could affect to the treatment outcome of the patient with uh, dexamethasone. Uh, we will we already recruit the patient with different kind of LTA for each genotype, and then we randomize the patient uh, to receive the placebo or uh, dexamethasone for six or eight weeks. And then uh, we want to test for the uh, association about the dexamethasone or other kind or other LTA vaccine with the survival of the patient. And uh, this trial provides the sample for my BSD study. Uh, yes, from this last trial, about 720 patients, I collected 200 patients for my BSD study. And in my BSD study, I will perform uh, the transcriptomic in which I measure the expression of the gene of the many, many gene in a human at, uh, from the whole blood in order to answer two questions. The first question about the effect of dexamethasone to the inflammation or the mortality of TBM. And the second question is the effect of LTA4 gene uh, to the inflammation and mortality. And at the same time, we also did uh, SNP DNA typing in order to find out the gene, new gene or uh, new gene variant, which associate with the inflammation as well as the severity and mortality of TBM. And uh, currently I am a second BC student in group and I, uh, yeah, that is all about my, that is uh, an overview about my project. And thank you. If you have a question, I- Thanks, I yeah. Cheers, thank you so much. Um, moving on to our Malaria group, um, I think we have Ms. Tien on the call. Yes, can you hear me? Can yes, you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Ting, member of the group Malaria. Today, I will introduce about the Malaria group in the Okru. Malaria has the 19 member of the head of Malaria, Dr. Nguyen Quang Chou, and by of the head group, the Dr. Nguyen Thanh Thinh Ying. My group is divided into sites based on Ho Chi Minh City and the 
developing food province. Marup mainly study to malaria endemic regions in the Vietnam and greater Mekong region. Next, next slide, please. Yes, what do we intend investigate? What is the malaria? Pakwans was in the malaria. Um, malaria in the infection disease called caused by the protozoan organisms of the renal plasmodium. The malaria parasite develops both in the humans and the in female uh, anophen mosquito. Symptoms of malaria include the fever, headache, and the vomiting. If you treat malaria, it can quickly become the lie uttering by the restricting the blood supply in vital organ. Today, they are the 5BC of the plasmodium, plasmodium fanciparum by VAC, Valeria ovale coresti. Um, plasmodium fanciparum and by VAC in the major cause of the unit malaria in Vietnam. But in the recent year, the brush resistance of plasmodium has become becomes the virus in the emetics of the Vietnam. Next, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. The roots are uh, packed to the root of the view in the malaria into main you know, molecular surveillance and the lab research. Uh, we focus on the Lasmodium parasite genotyping, molecular marker of the rough resistance, and the parasite kitten and the residential assay. Uh, then, triolinical, we are the focus to dealing with the rough resistant malaria elimination. Also, we try to study the other parasite fanciola SB. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, in the clinical trial, we try to induce current therapy of the therapy for plasmodium fanciparum and vivac. And we research to find out the new anti malaria drugs, such as the new combination, treat ACT, comatin, uh, plus the amodequin. Uh, also, we we must read administration involving the treatment to every, every member of the population or the very person living in defined geographic areas. Yes, next slide, please. Molecular surveillance and lab re and lab research. We are first cut on the genetic epiology and the whole genome sequencing. This the molecular epiological study are the decided to determine at the anti-malaria and blood resistant pattern and, gen and genetic diversity of the malaria isolate collect collected from Vietnam and country of Iceland. And we will perform the whole genome sequencing of the last modium fanciparum for malaria isolate Vietnam and country Iceland. It provides unrestricted and regulate this relevant information correcting malaria parasite when um, due to the study malaria apology. Yes, next, next slide, please. Yes, uh, we developed to the methods of methods of parasite cutin and drug sensitive assay into the BHAR. Uh, PSA and RSA. BHIRSA in the identify the genetic maker artemisinin and um and be 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 better queen genetic maker of the artemisinin resistant and be better queen resistant and the study there also with the uh, two brush uh, treatment failure. Yeah, finally, molecular surveillance, lab research, and the clinical trial have to deal with the rough resistance malaria elimination. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Thank you so much, Team Malaria. So from one disease spread by mosquitoes, we'll move on to another and to Team Dengue. And I think we have Dr. Nguyen on the line to present for the Dengue group. Okay, thank you, Lee. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, okay. So hello, hello everyone. My name is um, Reed. I'm a clinical postdoc scientist of Dengue Group. Uh, today, I'm delighted to be here and introduce you about our Dengue Group. Uh, so Dengue Group is one of the big research group in Okru. We have more than 20 staff with different backgrounds, uh, including clinician, nurses, pharmacist, science, and engineer. 
We are currently working on the various immunology works in collaboration with many large hospitals in Vietnam, firstly to better understanding about mechanism leading to severe disease in uh, dengue, especially in the high-risk population, such as pregnancy, uh, obesity, and elderly. And then to assess the association between the biomarker and uh, severe progress in dengue. We have great uh, we have a great collaboration with the King College and Imperial College in UK to develop the wearable devices, as well as to use the non-invasive equipment, such as the ultrasound machine, to continuously monitor dengue patient and predict when they would de develop severe disease. This data can also help us assess how the severe patient responds to the emergency treatment the clinical trials using the drug having antiviral or anti-inflammatory ability are going to be conducted, aiming to assess uh, the safety and the um, efficacy of the drug on dengue viruses, as well as on the disease progress. The entomology work of our group focus mainly on the Wabakia, a simian that infect the mosquito's uh, body that can have ability to prevent transmission of dengue virus from the mosquito to humans. And our PhD program, uh, our PhD student will present about uh, her project related to WAPA care later on. So this slide show you a very nice and smiley face of the people who finished their PhD project with the dengue group. Uh, so now our PhD student will uh, talk about her project. Yeah, good Good afternoon, everybody. My name is King, and I'm a PhD student in the Dengue Research Group. So today, I, it's my pleasure to be here to, and talk about the, my PhD. So this is the my PhD uh, topic, we're back here for the biocontrol of Dengue and how will the virus respond? Next slide, please. So dengue is a, vec um, a vector-borne disease distributing mostly in tropical countries. And according to a modeling study, there will be 2.25 billion people will be uh, in the risk of uh, infection in 2080. And, but due to the lack of the effective therapeutics and vaccine, so vector control has remained the main method for uh, dengue control. Uh, however, this tool did not provide a significant effect. And recently, Wobakia E proposed as a promising biocontrol method for dengue control. Uh, Wobakia are uh, intracellular endosymbiotic bacteria, and we can find uh, we can we can find this bacteria up to 60% in insects, but not in Andes aegypti, the main vector of dengue uh, infection. Um, to overcome this issue, uh, the sign, uh, many scientists um, transinfected the bacteria into Andes aegypti, and they run many few release of the uh, Wabakia infected uh, Andes aegypti um, to uh, in uh, in 11 countries. And in June 2021, a cluster randomized uh, trial in Indonesia proved the effectiveness of this uh, biocontrol method tool in reducing dengue incident and hospitalization cases. So next slide, please. Um, despite what Wabakia biocontrol method bring a definite um, benefit for to dengue control, but scientists raise question relating to the impacts of the evolution on uh, Wabakia. And we know that the long-term effectiveness of this tool will depend on the evolutionary stability of Wabakia and Dash Egypti and dengue. Here in my PhD thesis, I focus on assessing the effect of the dengue virus evolution on the effectiveness of this uh, biocontrol method tool. So um, I hope uh, I hope that I will, um, this 
my uh, my PhD will give like the primary result that can provide the uh, um the uh, uh, um some benef uh, some essential information to uh, build up the, the to build up the um, the long uh, the long and uh, range of, of uh, overview for this uh, biometric control method. So hope to see you. Some of you will be drawn to our dengue group research. Thank you so much, Kian, and thank you, the dengue team. Over to the zoonosis group, Dr. Chung. Uh, is, yes, no, Dr. Chung. Yes, I just I present. Okay, Nyung, <laughs> over to you. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Nyung, a PhD student. Uh, today, on behalf of uh, other member, I would like to introduce you uh, the my group, the zoonosis group. So, um, a zoonosis group is led by associate professor Dr. Ngo Thị Hoa, and uh, in our group, we also have two postdocs and one PhD and around 10 other experienced um, research assistant. Um, in a zoonosis group, we mostly investigate the diseases that can be transmitted between animals and humans. Uh, you can see in the left, the main research was not limited. Uh, includes the antimicrobial, antimicrobial resistance, uh, the um, uh, of commensal bacteria in uh, animal and humans, and also the AMR and pathogenesis of streptococcus suis and streptococcus pneumonia. By uh, so our project apply both the tra traditional techniques like uh, bacterial culture, uh, AMR testing, and uh, high technologies including uh, real-time PCR and uh, whole genome sequencing. And in the right is the two main projects uh, that are currently running in our group. The firstly is the, uh, we investigate the long-term carriers of cholestine resistance in, uh, among, farmer in um, among, among the farmer. And it uh, should be noted that cholestine, resist, cholestine is a very important medicine for uh, human with uh, the server infections and cholesterol resistant is a, a global issue nowadays. So addressing the cholesterol resistant among farmer uh, healthy communities is very important. And the second project is running uh, now is the uh, AMR and pathogenesis of a streptococcus pneumonia in healthy and diseased uh, children in hospital. Uh, in Ho Chi Minh City. So, um, but this is the main project, but uh, besides that we have all other small study still running in Europe. And uh, next, I would like to introduce very briefly about my PhD project. So um, I now I at a very late uh, stage of a PhD uh, and my PhD in, is enrolled at an uh, open university of uh, United Kingdom. And uh, the, my PhD is about uh, investigating the transmission and the dynamics of antimicrobial resistance in the chicken farm in Mekong Delta of Vietnam. So in uh, my PhD project, I have two study design. The first one is a longitudinal study design uh, in which I follow the chicken farm in uh, Mekong Delta. Uh, this farm, I am. Um, uh, follow two to five uh, production cycle. And uh, during that time, uh, I collect the sample and also the data from farm. And the second design is uh, the cross-sectional study designs uh, in which I collect the human sample and data from human and chicken in the same farm, but just one point at a time. Um, and all the sample collects from farm, from farm uh, will process in the lab with the uh, phenotype testing, which is uh, the testing for AMR uh, for resistance, and also the genotype testing uh, to identify the resistant genes. And all this work uh, have done to answer some questions. Firstly, the uh, how the uh, antimicrobial resistance changes uh, uh, over the production cycle, and also 
uh, to what extent the AMR is driven by antimicrobial use or by the transmission of uh, uh, AMR between human and animal in close contact. So um, my PhD just one piece of uh, uh, very uh, large um, studies over the world to which the final aim is uh, stop the uh, antimicrobial or resistant bacteria to save antibiotics for life. Yes, so I hope to see um, many applications into my group if any, if slots available. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neom, and thank you for the Zoonosis group summary. Handing over to our biostatistics team, we have Dr. Lam. Yeah, hello. Uh, my Hi, name Lam. is uh, Lam Phong. I'm a um, postdoc uh, affiliated with the um, Biostat group, uh, ad hoc group. So uh, I would like to give an overview about our group, and then Dr. Uh, Nguyen Lam Vương will uh, present in more detail uh, in his uh, PhD project. So uh, our group um, study about Biostat, which is a field that focus on analyze and interpret uh, data that collected on living organism and ad hoc group. Most of the data come from human. Um, and uh, our group have about uh, have nine people and uh, the current uh, group head is uh, Professor Ronald Beckers. Uh, we have, uh, Currently, we have uh, one senior uh, statistician, three postdoc, two PhD student, and two research assistant, and one data management assistant. Um, compared to other group, uh, our group have a very diverse uh, background. We have three mathematicians, but also have three medical doctor, one public health practitioner, and two other people with background in uh, civil engineering and biomedical engineering. Next slide, please. Uh, so uh, at Opro, our group uh, will support uh, other researcher to conduct their uh, data analysis. Uh, uh, also uh, have order to uh, supervise PhD student. We also provide training. Uh, so have other people to uh, learning about statistical methods uh, with uh, many course and seminar. We also do our own uh, research, uh, focus on develop a novel uh, statistical method uh, in areas that are relevant to Okru. And uh, currently uh, our main methodological focus is on three uh, area. One is uh, modeling and understanding the disease pathways. Uh, second is to develop uh, statistical models that can improve uh, diagnosis and prognosis. And thirdly, uh, to uh, develop um, uh, application programs that can have to uh, facilitate data cleaning, data management, and data analysis. Next slide, please. Uh, so these are just some uh, selected output from our group. We uh, publish uh, a number of papers uh, which is uh, apply um, uh, data analysis and also methodological paper where we compare different um, analysis uh, approach uh, when we um, uh, analyze the data. We also develop a uh, web um, application that have uh, order to clean data. So um, that's all about uh, our group. And then uh, now Dr. Nguyen Lâm Vương will uh, talk about his uh, PhD project. Thanks, Anh Lâm. Hi, everybody. My name is Nguyen Lâm Vương. And uh, before talking about my PhD project, I would like to uh, introduce a little bit about myself. So my background is a medical doctor. Uh, but I am very interested in doing research. So uh, after finished my residency in surgery in 2014, I uh, turned into uh, develop my career in uh, research. Uh, and I chose uh, of crew uh, because in Vietnam, uh, this is a very high quality um, unit to do clinical research. Uh, 
uh, we have very good uh, working environment and we do research in Vietnam. So it is very suitable if you want to develop a career in Vietnam. And of course, uh, our crew has a very good global collaboration. Next, uh, next, next slide, please. Um, so um, as uh, Lee uh, already mentioned about how to apply for a PhD position here, uh, but uh, my old way is uh, first I apply for a research assistant uh, position. So I work for the biostatistics group uh, at our group uh, from 2017 to, to 2020 before being a PhD student. And when working at, as a research assistant, I, I, I got used to with the working environment here and um, I learned a lot before uh, going to my PhD. Uh, I am familiar with uh, the environment here. Uh, even I already cleaned many data uh, for my PhD project before. And, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, a summary of my uh, PhD project, because um, I, when I was a research assistant, I worked mostly for Dengue area. Uh, so uh, that's why I uh, chose uh, Dengue as my PhD project. And in my project, I have three main studies. Uh, and the main aim is to investigate more about the pathogenesis of severe dengue outcomes. Uh, as you may know that uh, dengue infection, uh, although we know about this disease for quite a long time, but uh, the pathogenesis is still unclear and we still have no specific treatment for this virus. And there's still uh, the, the current only uh, vaccine is very limited and especially it's not applied in Vietnam. So uh, we still have many severe cases, uh, especially in the uh, um, endemic time in Vietnam. So uh, that's why uh, I aim to investigate more on the pathogenesis of uh, severe dengue. And um, my PhD project is in between uh, the biostatistic and the clinical setting uh, as dengue. So I uh, apply uh, the advanced uh, statistical method to analyze uh, a big data and try to answer uh, some questions about the pathogenesis of severe dengue. Um, that's the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fong, and thank you to the biostatistics team. I'd now like to pass over to Tin from the mathematical modeling team. So great to see everybody. My name is Tan, and I will present our mathematical modeling group. And then we in our PhD will talk about her PhD journey. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. We currently have seven people in our group, including our very handsome for pet, Dr. Mark Chozi. We have one PhD student and five research assistants with a wide range of backgrounds from health economics, computer science, biotechnology, and preventive medicine. Next slide, please. So in our group, we develop mathematical models, which are mechanistic models. You may know that the mechanism of uh, infectious disease transmission is when a susceptible person contact with a infected person, so we can describe it with a SL model. And we use this type of model in a variety of purposes in our projects. We're currently correlating the surveillance system with 20 hospitals across the country. And we develop model to optimize the system itself, a decision-making system and vaccine policies. We also are uh, co-leading an antimicrobial resistant system and we aim to optimize empirical treatments and investigate the interaction between antimicrobial resistant and vaccine preventable disease. We use machine learning to 
discover the impacts of climate change to infectious disease transmission. And we also developed model to mitigate COVID-19 burden to uh, the ICU and optimize vaccine policies for COVID-19. Regarding health economics, we investigate the cost effectiveness and benefits of treatments and technologies. And for all the methods and model we have developed, we will translate them into software so that everybody can use them easily. Next slide, please. Uh, so 30 seconds for advertisement. We are hiring a research assistant to um, develop a software to analyze big data for infectious disease. So by big data, we have two kinds of data. One is the serological data from our, serolo from our sero surveillance system of 20 hospitals across the country and social contact data, which coming from social networks such as Facebook or Twitter or Google. So if you're interested and you have programming experience, please feel free to contact us. Uh, thank you. And up next is our PhD student, Nguyen Huyen, we will talk about her PhD journey. So hi, everyone. My name is Huyen. So to let's start with, I will talk really quickly about my background. So I got the bachelor and master in public health. In 2019, I started my PhD program of health economic, which means that now I'm still in the program. My PhD project is about the health economic evaluation for hepatitis C treatment in Vietnam. You can see some of the hashtag in here is an area of science related to my topic. For example, health science, social science, economic uh, infectious disease or infectious modeling. So I get that a lot of participants today is a student or the people who are looking for opportunity to work in a crew or PhD program. So in my perspective, I would like to say that if you really want to pursue the life going to the PhD, there is two key of important thing. The first one is about the skill. For example, English skill, research skill, or independent skill. And the second one, I think is much more important. It's about passion and passion. Uh, you know that like the PhD program is not take you only one day or two day. It takes the whole, at least four years of your life. That reason, you have to know that what are you doing, what you are really want to do. So, and also keep the patient step day by day to get go through of that. And one a little bit thing I want to say is about the lucky. Lucky somehow will bring very important role for a certain job. So please check update check the information regularly about the opportunity job in our crew or the PhD program. And please don't hesitate to contact us, the mass modeling group. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Wen. That's wonderful. And thank you to the mathematical modeling team. Now I'd like to pass over to um, Dr. Yui Pham, our head of molecular epidemiology. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's been always good to see so many people to uh, join these open days every year. So my name is Yu Pham. I'm the head of molecular epidemiology group at Ogrus. And uh, I would like to give a brief introduction about uh, my research group. So we study the numbers of drug resistance bacteria infections in Vietnam and across Asia. So including interest uh, fevers, diarrhea diseases, bloodstream infections, and also communal infections, and also uh, we've done some work on human gut microbiomes to study uh, the role of commensal bacteria in the evolution of drug resistance uh, pathogen. So our, sorry, can, can you zoom the slide in a little bit? I, I really cannot see the slide. Um, sorry. Okay, I can see it now, sorry. Yeah, okay, That's, good. It's, it's a blurry, so I really cannot see the, the slide somehow. 
it look blur it look blurry on, on on my screen. Anyway, so uh, so our long term goal our goal is to have an impact on human health uh, locally and, and regionally by improving our uh, biological understandings, diagnosis, and outcomes of vaccine infections. So the two areas of uh, research stuff we are focused on right now. So uh, the first one is about molecular epidemiologies and evolutions of stroke resistance uh, bacteria infection. So basically we use uh, whole genome sequencing and the range of molecular technique uh, try to understand how the bacteria evolve to become resistant to antibiotics and how are they transmitted in different uh, systems, different population. And, and, and leverage the technologies to improve our current diagnostic and surveillance system. On, on the, the other aspect that we are working on is more of a lab-based uh, science focusing on the molecular biology of these uh, uh, these gram-negative uh, pathogens to understand the mechanisms of uh, stroke resistance and uh, use um, different uh, technologies like uh, like genes editing. I study uh, gut microbiomes and 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 also uh, some of the work on chemical uh, screening. You know, not only try to understand how the bacteria become uh, resistant to antibiotics, but also come up with a new way to treat infections and, and also a new way to prevent the transmission of stroke resistance uh, bacteria. And we hope that in the future, some of our research will uh, turn into uh, you know pro remissions uh, product that we can develop into interventions. So, um, uh, so in in a nutshell, so our our research approach is uh, you can you know uh, multidisciplinary if you if you like. So we combine in uh, different uh, ways to the surveillance of the uh, stroke resistant infection. We also perform clinical trials, and then a numbers of uh, lab based uh, research project on the back of the surveillance and clinical trials. So. Basically, try to address specific problem from uh, different uh, uh, perspective and different uh, technique. So, uh, so something that we are good at. So, our expertise including back to genomics, molecular um, epid epidemiology, and, and biology, uh, and also clinical microbiology. Uh, some of the work about uh, serology, and then also we have we aim to develop more into the uh, immunology work in the future. We also have a good teams. You know, we can. You know, know exactly what to do to uh, implement and uh, initiate and 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 manage the different uh, study. Uh, I cannot see the slide to be honest; it's just so blurry now. Uh, Lee, I don't know yeah. what happened with, with my slide, but uh, I cannot read anything. It's so blurry. It looks fine uh, on mine. I wonder if it's your connection. But would you like me to pass over to Fong to talk about her project? No, no, I just, uh, yes. Can I, can I see the slide, please? Okay, sorry. Okay, I can see that from <laughs> my student's uh, laptop. So over the years, we have established uh, a research network, you know, within Okru and also uh, with international uh, collaborators. Uh, for example, it's in many different universities in the UK, in the US. Uh, research institutions uh, in South uh, in South Korea and also um, other um, research institution in Alpha Tropical Network and also other collaborator in South and, and Southeast Asia and, so, and together we leverage the, the expertise and 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 uh, the skills and you know to together we can perform uh, better science or something that we cannot do at all we can always collaborate with. Uh, people outside. Uh, sorry. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, the very fifth, uh, so we have a number of uh, ongoing uh, research projects, uh, either you know, on uh, commissions, uh, also ongoing study and, and the study that we're going to start this year. So um, they, they're mainly, so I'm not going to the details of uh, every single study, but in in summarize, so this is these um, including some numbers of genomic surveillance uh, for a numbers of uh, gram negative pathogens and also for a numbers of infectious disease syndromes, not only in Vietnam but also in Cambodia, as in Bangladesh and um, and in Nepal as well. So we also involved in uh, 
you know, um, looking uh, doing the like randomized control trial, look for alternative treatment for infectious diseases, and also uh, vaccine trial for uh, rotavirus, for example. So very brief about my group. So we have about um, 20 people, have two postdocs, uh, two PhD students, about 10 research systems. Uh, we also have study managers, uh, study coordinators, um, uh, research doctor, research nurses, and also um, and one thing that I, I want to emphasize that I, I take students uh, in the last 10 years from many different local universities. And you are always welcome to come and learn and you know get some skill and some experience with research in my uh, research group. So next, I will hand over to uh, Ms. Full, who is my PhD student, uh, who will talk about her PhD uh, project. Um, hi. Yeah, can you go on to the next slide, please? Hi, everyone. My name is Phuong. I'm a, a PhD student. I'm actually just starting a month ago, but uh, I'm very excited about this uh, PhD opportunity of mine. Wait, can you go back on the slide before? Sorry. Yeah, so... Uh, okay, so just um, briefly about my project, just a bit of background because my project focus on the role of commensal bacteria and antibiotic exposure in the evolutions of drug resistant pathogens. Um, <clears throat> and a major player in a major factors that is involved in the emergence of uh, drug resistant pathogens is actually the commensal bacteria, those bacteria that live, reside in the gut uh, of our body. So these pathogens, uh, they can live, they can be transferred from the water, uh, from like between different uh, environments such as the water, the land, uh, the animals, and then can be transferred into human as well. And during this process, they may carry multi-drug resistant genes in their plasmid and uh, when a pathogens come in, to the human body, they can exchange the uh, genetic materials and become drug resistant. Uh, and we have seen we, in our lab, we have observed that this process, this uh, horizontal gene transfer can be upregulated when there is an increase, uh, when there's a use of um, antibiotics, as you can see here uh, in that um, diagram like under the exposure of antibiotics, you can see that there's an upregulation of a horizontal gene transfer. And that is the main reason why it's very important that we understand uh, how this uh, process happened. Can you go on to the next slide, please? Yeah, so this is my thesis, is to understanding the role of uh, human commensal bacteria and the impact of antibiotic exposure in the evolutions of drug resistant uh, in anti uh, enteric uh, pathogens. So uh, there are many components to my projects. It's mostly quite uh, laboratory based and experimental, um, a lot of different experiments basically. But basically uh, the essence of it is that we, under we have to understand the diversity of the plasmids that are currently being uh, circulated in Vietnam, and then we, and then I will try to understand the impact of the antibiotics on the uh, abundance, the populations of the uh, microbiome, as well as how the uh, AMR genes changes through uh, before and after their um, use of antibiotics, and then we'll, and then I'll go more into experimental, um, <clears throat> more experimental. Um, how to say, um, molecular experiments. So it's basically to understand the molecular pathway of this whole process, what regulates, what are the genes that are involved in this process, and then to be able to understand how we can potentially um, block this whole uh, horizontal gene transfer process altogether. And, by, and to do that, I will basically combine uh, <clears throat> 
I will basically combine a a lot of uh, experimental as well as computational approaches to understand this whole project, uh, this whole questions. But that's basically my um, PhD B field. And I'm excited to maybe potentially give you more advices on the process later on, if you need it. Thank you very much, Fong. Thank you. Um, okay, moving on to the clinical trials units. Um, Tuan, are you on the call? Yes, uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tuan, uh, and I'm the Senior Research Coordinator in Upper Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. So on behalf of my team, I am presenting this session focused on the program clinical trial units. In this session, uh, I will provide some background on the clinical trial units across the program, and my colleague, uh, Ms. Hong Im, will present the development of uh, social science research. Uh, the Opera CTU were first established in uh, 2006 as a direct result of a fairness to increase the uh, research capacity and enhance the quality of Opera clinical trials and greater clinical research through the monitoring, coordinating, and enhances to local and inter international regulatory requirement and the principle of good clinical practice. All the over the past 15 years, the CTU has worked to increase research quality and capacity by building the human resources, facilities, oversight, and administrative system necessary for conducting an ever-growing number of clinical trials. Next, please. Uh, back. Yes, thank you. Opera now hosts uh, clinical trial units across the program with the appetite and capacity to deliver all the current and future research uh, that you will be introduced to during uh, this virtual visit. The CTU network now included a CTU space in Ho Chi Minh City with 44 staff members, with a list by uh, Ms. Evelyn and other sisters in Hanoi, Nepal, and Jakarta. The CTU in Hanoi was set up in 2010 with only one staff member, and now currently we have like a seven members. In Jakarta, Indonesia, since 2020, uh, CTU were created and managed by Mutia. Uh, currently, we have the 23 member. In Kathmandu, Nepal, set up with Samitar in 2017, we currently have a three uh, full-time staff. This network allow for standardizing the policy and procedure in trial management, which uh, brings efficiencies, especially when we are co-enrolling on collaborating clinical trial. Uh, this is the basis uh, uh, CTU organizational structure, which is similar across the program. Uh, basically, we have three components. Firstly, a research government governance. Uh, we have the uh, ethical and regulation. Our government team handle all ethical and regulatory uh, submission for the unit. This has allowed us to train experts who have uh, developed a close relationship with the local authority, uh, managing uh, the approval and, the de and defining policies. Uh, the second one is quality and compliance. We have a qualified monitoring team who support the site to ensure the quality in our work. And we also have a centralized purchase and contract to provide an efficiency and transparency a payment process. Uh, the second component is operation. The research operation team included uh, pharmacy, data, and coordination, which is responsible for implementing and managing a clinical trial conducted as OPERU uh, collaborating hospitals. The team support investigators to develop protocol and whole study procedure, documentation, and system necessary uh, to uh, run the, stu uh, the study uh, from beginning until the end. And the last one is a social uh, science and research team uh, has developed it initially in the Ho Chi Minh CTU, uh, but now it supports research group more and across the program. So I would like to hand over to Ying to present the social science work. Ying, please. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ying from the social science team. Um, and uh, it's my pleasure to talk to you today on behalf of my team. 
Um, in the next few minutes, uh, I will quickly walk you through our focuses and current works so that you will have a, an overview picture in mind. The social science team uh, was formed in 2017 and has been increasing in numbers over the past years. Uh, overall, the team designed and implements um, social science studies to complement ongoing clinical research, as well as explores how related topics more broadly to provide deeper contextual information surrounding specific research topics. We are, multi, we are a multidisciplinary team uh, with a mix of disciplines from anthropology to public health and nursing, with a range of uh, methodological expertise, uh, including ethnography and mixed method research. Within the team, we focus on training and improving capacity in social sciences and approaches. Next slide, please. Um, now I would like to give you some specific insights of our work. Um, we are collaborating with the Social Health Bioethics Network to conduct studies exploring um, ethical aspects of, um, of clinical trials and how related um, research. One of the projects looks at um, the practice and perceptions of informed consent practice in uh, clinical tri trials. And the second to explore the perspectives of uh, hospitals, uh, ethics committees members regarding the integration of qualitative research into hospital settings. We are part of a larger studies and a group, for example, the research study, uh, looking at the perceptions of stakeholders, including students, policy makers, and help work and help workers regarding human challenge models. Um, vaccination and research model more broadly um, to inform future vaccine related research. Um, we have two major studies include uh, looking at experiences of infectious diseases, um, including a large COVID-19 studies called SPEAR and hepatitis, uh, hepatitis related research. In, uh, including two ongoing projects, um, a community-based participatory research study with underserved populations. And we are also forming a larger network of social scientists studying viral hepatitis. We also have a PhD student um, joining studies exploring the antimicrobial resistance issues in, in Upper Hanoi. Uh, you might have some knowledge about these studies uh, from Sonia and Nam earlier today. So our responsibility in these studies is uh, to explore the so socioeconomic and political context of antibiotics in Vietnam to later info um, inform interventions for tackling the issues of MR in the communities and beyond communities. Um, lastly, we are collaborating with the innovation project at the hospitals with two components, uh, the, the ethnographic research within the ICU and the policy research to explore the wider landscape of integrating technology into the ICU settings. Um, and that's the end of our talk. We would like to welcome you to join our dynamic and innovative team to, and to work on exciting and important topics. Thank you so much for your listening. Thank you so much, Ian, and thank you to the CTU team. And I would like to pass over to Tan in the public and community engagement team. Yeah, thank you, Lee. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I am Yi Tan, and I am the vice head of public and community engagement. Specifically, I am leading on the schools and youth engagement. I work at Upro. Yeah. And um, so today, I am presenting on behalf of um, a diverse and brilliant team of our people working on engagement in Vietnam, Nepal, and Indonesia. Next, please. So our team, uh, we started about over 10 years ago, and now has grown in, in numbers at least, and is now spread over the region. So we collaborate in our work, we collaborate with uh, multiple like, stakeholders, including government partners, universities, schools, also with filmmakers, artists, and a range of people in NGO sector. Next, please. And um, how we define our work, so our vision. Um, our vision is 
to conduct an evidence-based engagement that supports researchers to deliver ethical and relevant research that's of value to our local communities and partners, and also to promote a broader science literacy for, for, for community, uh, for society. And, and, this, and this vision has led our work into three main aims. Uh, we enrich the research of uh, approved. So we do this by enabling research communities to be more involved and for researchers to be better equipped to engage. And this contributes to increase how equity, more relevant research and more sustainable partnership. And secondly, we, we aim to engage with the wider public by creating opportunities for the dialogues between researchers and the public. Thirdly, we build evidence and practice around engagement by strengthening the knowledge and our work on our program and also sharing lessons amongst the, the global community of engagement practitioners. Next, please. Uh, so for, for the audiences of our engagement, which means that the people we, uh, like, well, we think of for the designs and the delivery of our engagement activities. So these are our audiences that are the focus of our engagement program. They fell, they fall into three distinct groups which is how we organize our engagement work. So we want to in, enrich the research conducted through the OCRU by engaging and partnering with the communities who are involved with trials and study. So these communities include patients and their families who come in, into hospitals that we, we are working in, or they are defined geographically or by their lifestyles, such as farmers at risk from genetic diseases. And um, we also aim to engage with um, marginalized groups, such as um, ethnic minority people, or those living with um, stigmatizing diseases, such as leprosy, and therefore who have less access to healthcare and the benefits of research. And um, like supporting healthcare workers has been a major part of our engagement over the past decade. So based on the feedback of the healthcare workers who involved in our activities, we have developed a training curriculum around, uh, a training curriculum that support a better communication and empathy skills for, for healthcare workers, such as how to share bad news, yeah, how to communicate more like, confidently and more effectively with patients. Yeah. And within our aims to engage with the wider public across the region, we have a strong focus on working with school children and youth we have partnered with a number of like, international organizations to learn about their work and adapt those methods of engagement, such as plant sand debates or web-based engagement, which allow us to build more like convenient connection between researchers, scientists, and young people together. And finally, we are now increasing our work, our partnership with young people to strengthen their capacity for engagement and to respond to the global health crisis. Uh, we, we feel lucky to have a partnership with small groups of young science enthusiasts called Youth Science Ambassadors to, like, to work together to develop collaborative ideas that promote good science and good health in their communities. Uh, next, please. Yeah, and here you can see some examples of our, like, of our work. Um, that have been running together uh, with multiple stakeholders by using a variety of engagement methods and tools. So we, um, uh, we do radio, uh, we do podcast, uh, we promote uh, uh, the approach of using uh, digital diary to, uh, to share, to amplify, uh, like to collect uh, the voices of the public and inform uh, the researcher about their insights which benefit to the future research and in current implementation of their uh, study. Uh, we also like, um, like, um, like in partnership with like external like stakeholders, external like supply, uh, external partner to organize the public photo exhibition, and uh, we do run social media campaigns, uh, also like online webinars uh, to communicate uh, both interests and concerns of the public relating to like health science and um, and, and research. Yeah. So next, please. 
So I end with the key principles that will, and like actually are like driving our engagement forward and on which we base on our approach and partnerships. So this includes uh, sustainability, which we mean about document, uh, we promote a practice of documenting uh, our, uh, our work um, and strengthen uh, the partnership uh, with like, people outside our group. Inclusion, um, increasing the involvement of the public and particularly uh, the marginalized and vulnerable communities. Uh, we want to, uh, to have their voice heard and involved in the designs and implementation of our, not only our engagement, but also uh, any future research um, designs at Upro. And uh, empowerment, we, we are keen to empower and build resilience among our team uh, and our communities to be able to respond to new situations such as global pandemics. So this is just kind of, um, an, an, a snapshot of the huge amount of engagement that is going on across a group size in Vietnam, Nepal, and Indonesia. And I really hope that it's supported to give uh, you all an overview of our engagement activities and our group. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, Lee. Thank you very much, Tan. And thank you to all of our groups. So you've had a whistle-stop tour of the research groups at Oak Crew. And I'd just like a bit of fun. So we've been talking a lot and I would love to hear some more from you. So I'm going to launch a poll that you will see on your screen here. And the poll asks, which of, your which of our research groups are you most interested in? Now, remember that there's around 10 options there. So you can scroll up and down, make sure you don't miss any of the options. You can only pick one. So it'd be really good to hear what your favorite group was. So I will just give you a few more seconds to finish that. We have about 30% of the audience have voted so far. So where are you most interested in? Okra Hanoi, emerging infections, TB, malaria, dengue, zoonoses, biostatistics, modeling and health economics, molecular epidemiology, or social sciences and public engagements. So which of our research groups are you most interested in? We'll give you 10 more seconds. Okay. If you've not been fast enough, I am ending the poll now and I'm going to share the results with you. So it looks like with 20% of the vote that our molecular epidemiology team, you found the most interesting. But anyway, that's just a little bit of fun. And um, let me stop sharing the results. And sorry, I just need to close that and go back to my screen, apologies for that. All right, so you've heard from a lot of our groups and we obviously do a lot of work in research, but coming back to what it means to be a research scientist at Oak Crew and what it means to be a student, because we're really committed to ensuring that we support our staff and students to um, fulfill their full potential and reach their full potential. So I'm just going to show you another very short video and this is about our training, uh, our training program at Oak Crew. The thing that defines Oak Crew's culture at the moment is a spirit of endeavour and collaboration that is really unusual. I think that's what people feel when they walk into this building and that's what we need to maintain. Okra has been really successful in terms of developing and growing homegrown scientists. We have a number of graduates through our programmes and Okra staff have gone on to senior positions in other institutions and in government for example. Our PhD programme at Okra is also incredibly successful. We've graduated over 100 PhD students since we started our programme and in actual fact the students at the moment, our student body, um, over 90% of these are actually homegrown, they're local, so being Vietnamese, 
Indonesian, Nepalese, for example, and that's actually pretty representative of our history of graduating students. So I think through Okru, uh, I receive a lot of things. So I receive training, support from um, a group of supervisors um, in different areas. ACRO particularly pays attention to the development of researchers uh, with support resources that you hardly can find in any other research institutes in the country and also in the region. Over the years, I have received much support through the ACRO program, which allow me to, to have more study, especially in epidemiology during the COVID pandemic and also uh, another research studies. I have been fortunate to be part of the Make Difference program and it has been beneficial for me in so many ways such as uh, developing a successful and productive team, training to be part of the coaching and mentoring SIP for the new students. One of the initiatives that was started is called OWLS and OWLS stands for Okru Women Leaders in Science. We developed that group because we felt that young researchers needed to see strong female role models, female researchers, female leaders, but also they expressed a need to network, to develop their careers. One of the achievements that we're very proud of is the development of a mentorship scheme, because we really want to be able to offer our young researchers all the tools they need to develop a successful career in science. We want to support scientists right from the level of BSc through their career pathway to enable them to reach their full potential. I think it's um, the, the support, the environment and the freedom. And I think that we've been so lucky to be funded by Wellcome to uh, develop our own scientific career. So our offer also gave me the many precious opportunity to do clinical research in Vietnam, uh, to become the head of a research group um, to receive two Wellcome Trust Fellowship and have more funding from international networks. Uh, when being a Wellcome Fellow, I have more recognition and credentials in the research field. Uh, I'm becoming more confident in expressing my own research contributions and more confident in reaching out and connecting with uh, prominent researchers in the world. I'm also a recipient of the Wellcome Fellowship and it has uh, brought me to the new level to be an independent scientist. I want to, to train more uh, PhD students, uh, Vietnamese PhD students. Um, I want to you know, inspire them to do uh, science. Um, that would you know, uh, strengthen the scientific capacity here in Vietnam. I am now trying to pass on what I received by um, continue training, um, mentoring and creating more opportunities for my students and uh, my group member. So the ultimate objective is to produce scientists from the region who are capable of standing up and doing internationally competitive science. I think my job as a leader is as a catalyst. I am here to try and make things happen. Therefore, uh, the style required for that is one of inclusivity, uh, one of listening, one of transparency, and that's what I endeavour to bring to the programme. And I hope that that manifests itself through the, through the programme as part of the, the culture that we uh, create here in Okru. I think the research culture that's been uh, cultivated in Okru has been, very, has been very important for its success. There are several key elements. It's, it's a, a, a multinational collaboration. It's inquiring, it's flexible, it's reactive, and it's highly effective. And I, I think it's a, a tribute to uh, everyone who's worked in the unit. Okru is about building future leaders. It doesn't begin and end with PhDs. And I think that's really, really important. It's the transferable aspect of what we're trying to do, as well as encouraging future scientists to look beyond the lab and the clinic into how they can make a difference in their communities. Okay, and thank you for your attention, everyone. I know we're running a little bit late, but I, can ho I hope that you can stay with us just for around 10 more minutes, because I would like to introduce you to two of our current students from Oak Cruise so that you can hear a little bit 
about your experience, their experiences as they go through the early stages of their PhD. So I'd like to start by handing over to Tu. Tu, are you on the call? Yeah, thank you, Lee. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tu and I'm from Oklo, Hanoi. My background is public health. I graduated from Hanoi School of Public Health. Then I stayed two years in Sweden for my master's degree with the same major. After that, I started working in OKU since 2014 as a coordinator. Working in a professional organization like OKU enabled me to develop my knowledge about Vietnamese health system and develop my management skill in each project which are very helpful for my DFU later. And I was inspired by my supervisors and colleagues in doing research. They made me want to become an independent researcher. And I believe that PhD is a good move to achieve my goal. It took me a few years to look for the topic that I would like to invest four years of my life in until I had a chance to work in a project of AMR and antimicrobial stewardship. And I felt that's it. Although I worried so much before I applied this PhD scholarship, I knew that if I didn't do it, I would regret for the rest of my life. Currently, I am the first year student of University of Oxford, and people can question that what a public health person can do in hospital settings. And I would like to explain that my DFU project focuses on behavior change of doctors in antimicrobial prescribing practice. The project aims to develop an antimicrobial stewardship program in hospital setting and find out the facilitators and barriers of stewardship program in a low middle income country like Vietnam. And that's a summary of my story. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much too. Thank you for sharing your story and good luck as your PhD continues. And now I'd like to pass over to Nyat. Nyat, please tell us how your PhD is going so, so far and how you got to doing a PhD at Oak Crew. Nyat, are you on the call? Oh, okay, maybe. Can you hear me? Might... Yes, yes, you're okay, there. Great. I wondered if we'd lost Sorry. you. No problem. Okay, thank Liz. So, good afternoon, everyone. So, I'm talking to you from London. Uh, I am yes, I am PhD student at Bayes Opera and King's College London. So, I am graduated from the University of Medicine and Pharmacy in 2018. So, during my last year uh, of my university, I was uh, inserting uncertain how what I will do next after graduated. So I attend, I have a chance to know what to know to uh, actually the open day in uh, 2018. I think it's in uh, May actually, correct me if I'm wrong late, when it is the in-person meeting. So I have a uh, chance to listen to a uh, scientist and PhD student at Opera at that time, and it is, it's were really excited. And it's the first time I, I also met Lee and uh, Louis, who is currently my, one of my supervisors now. And I participate in the, an internship in uh, Emerging Infection Group under the surprise of Dr. In, Dr. Tan, and uh, Dr. Louis. So during the internship, I have learned and gained many experience, valuable experience and many valuable skill uh, as uh, uh, part of the clinical child research, uh, including but not, not limited to uh, ethical, ethical aspect of study, uh, brainstorming the idea study until recruiting the patient, uh, man managing the patient and also analyze the data and um, how to write the publication from our research and beyond that, how to make our research impact. And I had the chance to uh, go to London to present our research in 2019 in the Royal Academy of Engineering. So as that, I have uh, amazed my other researchers over the world who can study on clinical research and uh, one part of uh, uh, the missing you know, about 
how can we use artificial intelligence uh, and applica, apply it into healthcare. And I, after that, uh, I uh, come back to Vietnam and uh, think and talk about whether I should apply for the PhDs. And I started uh, doing my PhD in 2020 on AI in healthcare, particularly in AI in medical imaging. So I applied for the scholarship at Oro and at King's College. Uh, so both scholarships have uh, allowed me to conduct my own research. And uh, also uh, I have been training here at King College London for four years. And about my PhD life, so I spent more of my first year as Oracle doing my data curation and under many PD training program programs from Leeds and all the experts in Oracle. So now I'm currently based at King's doing most of my technical work and data analysis for my uh, study. And I will be back in Vietnam in hopefully next year. Uh, to continue my research in Vietnam and make impact of my research on real patients. And in the future, I really want to become an independent researcher as many people want, uh, want in their career and become a future scientist and inspire more students, more people to do research and make impact of their research locally and regionally. Thank you, Lee. That's all. Thank you so much, Nyath, and thank you to, so hopefully that gives you a flavour of a P, uh, the PhD perspective from students who are still very new to the process, still smiling, still enjoying their time, and will hopefully be looking forward to completing very strong projects very soon. Um, we've come to the end of the formal presentation part of our um, open day, um, but we do have some time for question answer. So perhaps if I just if I just pause, and if anyone would like to ask any questions, then they can pop them in the chat box, okay? Or you can raise your hand. Okay, I don't see any questions coming up, that's no problem. Um, just a reminder that Oak Crew is on Twitter and on Facebook, so do follow us. And if you have anything you would like to share, you can hashtag Oak Crew Open Day. We would also love to hear your feedback on this event. So if you could take some time to scan this QR code into your phone and leave us your feedback, or you can use this link. I will ask Ian to pop that in the chat box if she has not already. Yes, she, I think she's also said that if anyone wants to ask further questions, then please do send questions to, to us, okay? Um, otherwise, thank you for joining us today. I will stay on the call for the next five minutes or so in case anyone would like to have a quick chat. But otherwise, I would like to thank you for your time and joining us today. I hope you enjoyed our event. We have recorded this, so we will share that with you later. Okay, um, just a question in the chat box. Can I get the contacts of all groups? You can go mm. onto our website and you can access the details of the group on there, or you can contact us directly at training at .org and we can get back to you with the individual contact details of that group. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Mm. Okay, then if there's no other immediate questions, I will bring the meeting to a close. Thank you to everyone uh, for joining. It was lovely to see so many people on the call today. Yes, Nam, anyone who joined the call today will be able to get a recording. So if you signed up to the event, we can send you a recording automatically. If you did not sign up to the event formally, then you can send us an email to training at oco.org and then we can share the recording with you, okay? All right, everyone, then thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful afternoon and I look forward to seeing your applications later this year.
Thank you, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Thank everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye. Nat. I hope London's treating you well. Bye, everyone. Okay.